Hi, this is 2019, number five. Let R be the region enclosed by the graphs of G of X and H of X. The Y axis and the vertical line X equals two as shown in the figure above, find the area of R. Okay, so for area, I want to do the upper function minus the lower function. And you see here, one of these is a cosine of x, and the other one is a parabola, 6 minus 2, x minus 1. This parabola has a vertical shift of y equals 6, right? So the, uh, the vertex is at y equals 6, which is here. So that must be h of x, whereas this one <clears throat> is the cosine. Um, g of x. Okay, so to find the area, we want to do the integral from 0 to 2 of h of x minus g of x. So that's going to be 6 minus 2 x minus 1 squared minus negative 2 plus 3 cosine pi over 2x dx. All right, and this is one where we have to integrate by hand. So this will be 6x minus 2. And now here, we want to raise the exponent. So it'll be x minus 1 to the power of 3 divided by 3 minus, now the other parenthesis, negative 2x. And then here, um, this is going to be plus 3 sine pi over 2x. Um, but we have to divide by pi over 2, so this will be 2 over pi. Okay, and this whole thing is from 0 to 2. And the reason why we divide by the pi over 2 is um, if the integral is cosine pi over 2x dx, remember that u will be pi over 2x, which means du is equal to pi over 2, which is a constant. And remember there is a corollary, um, or a, not a corollary, but a shortcut that says if du is a constant, then we don't have to do all that u du business. We can just take a derivative of, of an integral of this, and it becomes sine pi over 2. And since du is a constant, you divide by that, meaning you multiply by the reciprocal. Okay. All right. Moving on here. Um, you have to plug in x equals 2 first. <clears throat> so here you get 6 times 2, this is 12, minus 2 over 3 times 1, minus negative 4, plus 6 over pi, sine of pi, that'll be 0. Okay, so all this minus, now you plug in the zero, so we get zero here, plus two over three, minus zero, and zero here as well. And finally, this will be 44 over three. Okay, so that's A. B says the region R is the base of a solid. For the solid, at each cross-section perpendicular to the x-axis, it has an area of 1 over x plus 3. Find the volume of the solid. So this is volumes by cross-sections, right? And remember, how do we find volume by cross-section? It's just the integral from a to b of a of x dx. So for part b here, it'll be the integral from 0 to 2 of a of x dx. And normally we would have to find a because it'll tell us like the cross section is a square or the semicircle and we had to find a. But here they gave us the a. It's 1 over x plus 3. 
dx, okay? So I just integrate that. The integral of 1 over u is ln of u. So this will be ln of x plus 3 from 0 to 2. So that's ln of, when you plug in the 2, 5 minus ln of 3. Um, and you can either leave it like that, or you can do ln of 5 over 3. So, okay, last, write but do not evaluate an integral expression that gives the volume of a solid generated when r is rotated about the horizontal line y equals 6. So we just need um, an integral. When it's revolved around the line y equals 6. So where is y equals 6? That's right here. Okay, now this has two <clears throat> um, radii. The way we do this is this. There are two radii because there are two functions. The way we do it is we start from the axis of revolution, which is this blue line. And we go out, okay, to the functions. So from here, I go out to one of the functions. And then from that same line, I go out to the other function. And clearly, the red is little r, and the green is big R. So how do we find little r? It's upper minus lower. The upper function is y equals 6 minus the lower function is g of x. Big R is the upper minus lower, 6 minus, oh no, I'm so sorry. Little r was h of x. This was h of x, okay? This top one is h of x. And now this is g of x. So the volume then for part C is pi times the integral from 0 to 2 r squared, right? So we have to do big R squared minus little r squared. So big R squared is 6 minus g of x squared minus little r squared, which is 6 minus h of x squared dx, and that's it. We don't have to integrate this. Um, we just have to find the integral, and you don't have to substitute the actual functions for g of x and h of x because these are functions that they've given you themselves. So that's full points right there. Okay, thank you very much.